Hi there, my name is Ron Rogers, and this video is titled, You Meet the Pilot You Want to Become, Then He Dies in a Crash. It's Captain Jerry Bolt, Thunderbird number four. Now, as you all know, these type of air shows with the Thunderbirds and the Blue Angels, they are a recruiting uh, venue. They have beautiful aircraft. They go up and put on one heck of a show. And, you know, me as a, a young college kid, it was just, oh, I was enthralled. I was in ROTC, I wanted to be a pilot, and I had no concept of what it was like to fly an F-4. I didn't get to fly one until, of course, many years later, but it looked like fun. I wanted to do it. Didn't have a clue, but I wanted to do it. Now, this is at the Sioux City Air Show back in the 70s. Um, this is Jerry. This is an actual picture. He's number four there in this slot. Now, the reason um, I happened to come up to him was just... He happened to taxi in. There's him again. You can tell the slot guy has the black tail. It's not painted that way. It's just the exhaust from the F4s make it black. And he happened to be the guy that, that barked uh, in front of where I happened to be standing. And these airplanes were absolutely beautiful. I mean, it, it was quite a show, and they had put on quite a show. So I go up to Jerry, and I talk to him, and I tell him, hey, uh, you know, I want to be an Air Force pilot. I'm an Air Force ROTC. So... He signs the, the little, uh, you know, handout that they have there that's got all about the crew and the mission and stuff like that. And uh, puts it, good luck in ROTC. Signs it, Jerry. Well, unfortunately, not too long after that, he's out uh, flying a test mission, a functional check flight. They had done some work on his uh, airplane. And I guess there was a problem in an outer wing panel, it's described as. I'm not sure which one or what exactly happened, but supposedly it came off. And both he and I imagine that's his crew chief uh, were killed in the accident. Now, you talk about an interesting guy. Um, there was no way I was going to be an academy graduate. I, I was doing science fair stuff. I was going to be a nuclear physicist. My dad had been a forward air controller in World War II. And I thought the stories about this guy who was full of bombers and watching planes fall out of the sky on a daily basis was an exaggeration. I found out it wasn't. He did not want me to become a military pilot, but but I wanted to. But now look at uh, Captain Jerry Bolt's here uh, resume. Uh, Lubbock, Texas, uh, graduate of the United States Air Force Academy. Okay, uh, even if I wanted to be an Academy graduate, that wouldn't have happened. Um, I wasn't in any leadership positions, class president. I wasn't athletic. Um, even though I did a lot of science fair stuff, my academic involvement, I was bored with it. I didn't get very good grades. So the chances of me getting academy slot would have been zero. If I wanted to go at all, it's going to be ROTC. But okay. He flew 189 missions in Southeast Asia, 71 over North Vietnam, 2,100 flight hours, uh, Distinguished Flying Cross, Air Medal with 14 Oak Leaf Clusters, the Air Force Outstanding Unit Award, Vietnamese Armed Forces Honor Medal First Class, Vietnamese Service Medal and Three Bronze Stars, and the Vietnamese, Vietnamese Campaign Medal. This guy had quite a resume. And, uh, you know, the only thing, um, the, the sad part about it, it doesn't matter what you've been through, how much you've done, uh, sometimes it's just not your day. And that was the unfortunate thing of, here was the first um, real Air Force pilot I had met that really was doing something that I thought was really cool. And uh, shortly after this, he dies. I'm going to give you a funny side note here. Um, I was an Air Force pilot. I, be, I got out after about uh, a little bit over six years. Uh, they wanted to put me in a desk job, and, and I wasn't going to do that. I was going to fly. So I got hired by the airlines. And I'm, uh, you know, I've been through many, many training uh, courses, but now I'm upgrading as captain on the Airbus. And when I was in training, I, I tend to devour Dash 1s, and I just remember things very well. And I would be, uh, I, I remembered I was a DC-10 co-pilot, and we would be in the oral, and they were asking us systems questions, and I just whipped off the answers like that, because I, I knew it. And that was, you know, co-pilots try to impress the captain with how good they are, how sharp they are. Well, sometimes that can have a negative effect. The, uh, the captain took me aside, real nice guy, real nice guy. He took me aside and said, you know, you answer the question before I can even think about it. 
he said, would, would you do me a break and let me, uh, you know, give me a chance to answer some of the questions. So here I was in the process of, I was trying to impress him and it, uh, it turned out that, uh, well, I was, I was kind of interfering with his, uh, learning process. So I said, sure. And he later commented, he says, I could tell when they asked the question that you knew the answer and you were just sitting there on your hands. And he says, I really appreciate that, but okay, fine. Uh, DC 10 was my last co-pilot position. I became a 737 captain then a 727 captain. Now I'm moving to the Airbus and I had been, I was, a uh, on the uh, new aircraft evaluation and certification committee for the airline pilots association. I've been flying fight flight tests in a number of aircraft and I'd flown a number of flight test missions, uh, on Airbus aircraft. And, uh, one of the things is the Airbus will revert to secondary, uh, control laws. Um, like alternate law. And of course the question in class was, well, how do you get into, what, what causes you to go to alternate law? And I said, well, I would ask Fernando, who was the flight test engineer, uh, to put us in alternate law. And then he would. And well, that's not the answer, but I show up, I'd been busy. I'd been uh, going to a lot of these, uh, the flight test activities and I had not had time to read the manual. And I sat down next to Steve Anderson and he's got his little, uh, uh little uh, flight manuals open there. And he's got a little name tag that says, uh, Steve Anderson lead Thunderbirds. I go, really? That's you? And he goes, yeah, boss. And I go, cool. So, but Steve, you know, he was really sharp and he's sitting there and he's answering the questions before I can in class. And finally they ask one and I know this one. I go, oh, I know that one. So I answer it. And, uh, the instructor says, no. And I go, no. And I look at Steve and Steve's shaking his head. No. And Steve answered it. And it was different. He said, well, they, they changed that in the uh, supplementary information. And I've read, I said, you've read the supplements. I haven't even read the flight manual yet. And he kind of laughed. So I ended up calling him my co-pilot from hell. So I was getting the same thing that I'd gone through. Of course, you know, the thing is, uh, if you're going to be a Thunderbird, you now have a reputation that you have to uphold. So I had Steve uh, sign a little picture there. The, you can't quite see it, the two Ron up there, but, uh, and I had him uh, sign it as the co-pilot from hell because he was my co-pilot from hell. But that's kind of my full circle on uh, Thunderbird pilots. Thanks for watching.